said, why don't we teach high school students um, how to launch a venture, but for social good. This fall, we'll work with over 18,000 students. Uh, we've 20x our revenue. The growth has been incredible. So a lot of people will see problems and say, oh, that's a problem. Someone else will solve it, or it's a problem, it's a roadblock. Entrepreneurs see problems as opportunities to make things better. Hello, my name is Dylan Scott. I'm the digital content producer at Techstars. Today, we're going to be talking to Mark Starin, the CEO and founder of University Startups. University Startups was a member of our inaugural Washington, D.C., powered by J.P. Morgan cohort, and they're focused on empowering and teaching entrepreneurial skills and mindsets and abilities to underprivileged and under-resourced youths in communities. Mark is a serial founder, and he's going to talk to us about the process of building university startups, what his experience was like going through Techstars, and he's also going to share some tips and insights for founders, and especially for youths who are thinking about following the path to entrepreneurship. Be sure to stay tuned for the entire episode, and make sure to like, follow, and subscribe to Techstars for more content like this. Thank you, and enjoy the show. Mark, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. So let's just get started. Why don't you tell me about your background a little bit? Give me the story of you and university startups. Yeah, awesome. So I'm a five-time founder. Um, kind of went into semi-retirement, went into education, thinking of ways that we could take our experience and, and help others. So uh, I taught in K-12. I was a professor at Georgetown University in the business school. And actually, during COVID, uh, me and a, a colleague were kind of bored. So we said, why don't we teach high school students um, how to launch a venture, but for social good? And again, this was during COVID. We thought we'd get 20 kids uh, signed up for the course. We ended up getting 67 high school students from California to Florida signed up. You know, no big deal. It was really exciting, a great course. But something really cool happened. Um, about six months later, I started getting emails saying, hey, professor, want to let you know i wrote about this experience got into dartmouth got into harvard and used that as part of their college essay just tremendous outcomes but listen i'm a five-time founder i told my wife don't stress it no startups are coming on board you know this is just fun it was just something i did during the summer but then dylan i got a call from a foundation in 2021 saying hey mark i heard what you're doing with these students what about the students we work with the under-resourced students and oh my gosh it was such an awakening like we are not doing enough to democratize the opportunity for uh so many of these amazing students and uh to give them pathways so we gave um you know gave us a, a talk with my co-founder we decided to put together put the band together we have professors from you know johns hopkins cornell university georgetown university and smes and college counseling and what we do now is we empower under-resourced students with pathways to either higher education or career success. And we do it through the entrepreneurial mindset. I'm really focusing in on these pathways from middle school all the way to the business world, focusing in on college counseling, workforce development, career exploration, and the entrepreneurial mindset. And it is transformative. So we're, we're really excited about the growth of the company. That's amazing. Can you walk me through some of the traction that you've seen through your products and services? Yeah. So when we did Techstars, uh, powered by JP Morgan in uh, last year that ended last December, we were doing about 2000 students um, and our MRR was about 3600. This fall, we'll work with over 18,000 students. Uh, we've 20x our revenue. We've entered new markets like New York City, Dallas, Texas. We're going to be working in Arkansas. The growth has been incredible. We've doubled our size of our employees. It's just, um, it's really exciting to see our growth and our net retention rate really is close to 20 to 25 X as well. And so the growth of the company, it, it's obviously amazing and huge kudos and commendations to you from me and the Techstars team. We, we obviously really love what you're doing because you're focused on, you know, teaching the skills of entrepreneurial abilities not only to younger people and younger generations but also to you know underprivileged under-resourced people which you know we preach above many other things and i'm curious what kind of impact has it had on you 
as a founder, as a person, um, how has it changed you? Just talk me through sort of what's been going on inside your head for the past few years working on this project. Yeah, so two, two things have really happened. One, you know, as all my colleagues know, being an entrepreneur is super hard. It is just, you know, from four in the morning till midnight, you're just working seven days a week. And, you know, I'm not unique. We're, we're all hitting the grind. But imagine you wake up every day being inspired, knowing that you're having an impact, not just on the individual that goes through the program, but it's generational change. So an individual that wasn't thinking about going to college now goes to college or gets a great paying job, that impacts their little brother or their little sister. That impacts the parent in the home saying, wow, you know, she's doing it. I can better myself away. So the impact has been incredible. So every day I am blessed to be part of this company. And quite candidly, it's been a great retention tool. I have the best people, you know, the a most amazing team who come in and say, I want to work with you. You know, when I, I put an ad on LinkedIn, I have 150 resumes by, you know, the time I wake up the next morning. It is just incredible because people want to be part of that, knowing that they can help others. And, you know, quite selfishly, it makes me feel awesome uh, knowing that we can do this. And the last thing is I, I wanted a company that me and my co-founder and my colleagues could turn to our children and they could say, my dad worked here or my mom works here. And that's really important to us. Um, and it's been really exciting. And just to give an example of the impact we're having in the communities. Um, we work with one school district that has the eighth highest murder rate in the country. 52% of those individuals that went through the program at the beginning of that said they weren't very hopeful for the future. 52%, that means 48% of these kids are not hopeful for their future. At the end of the program, 93% of those kids say they're now hopeful for the future. I mean, just imagine the transition that they're going to have in their life, thinking about there's now hope and they can be better and they can have a better future. So it's just to be part of that mission and that company is super exciting. So what's bringing kids to these programs then? If, if there are so many you know, young adults that are going into it saying, oh, I'm not hopeful of the future, that might seem like a reason for them to not be interested in pursuing one of these possibilities. How are you reaching out to them and getting in touch with them and making it so that they feel, you know, welcomed and supported by university startups? Yeah, awesome. So we're a business to education business. In other words, what we'll do is we'll partner with a school district or a school or even a nonprofit, and we're that programming partner. So think of someone, you know, who's working six classes a day and they want to embed the entrepreneurial mindset into these kids. We now provide that programming for that teacher to empower them. So the teacher feels like they're teaching something awesome. The student now is feels something awesome. But from the student's perspective, it's seamless, right? It's just another class being taught by one of their, their teachers or it's async at a time program that they're doing on their own time but the engagement levels are through the roof. So the teacher is psyched because, hey, I'm teaching something the kids love. The students are jazzed because it's impacting their future. And we provide an impact report to all our clients every semester where we measure 42 skills, not just the entrepreneurial mindset, not just outcomes, but optimism, positivity. So you're seeing an ancillary effect in these communities where students are feeling better about themselves. They're more self-confident and it's measured. So not only will they do better in that particular class, they'll do better in their other classes. So it's a win-win for the entire district. So we're, we're excited about that change. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. I, I mean, I can, you know, look back on being a student in high school and um, when I, I can particularly remember when I would have one class that I really, really liked. For me, it was physics. I loved mm. physics. I loved my physics teacher. I loved the curriculum. The rest of the year that I was taking that class, it felt like one of the best years that I had in high school. And so I can imagine in these students' situations where, you know, they might be, you know, totally down about going to school every day because they have so many other things going on in their lives that now they have this, you know, one piece of, um, education that is standing out to them is different, gives them a little bit of hope. The rest of their educational opportunities expand as well. So 
that is amazing. Um, I, I really, the idea really has an impression on me because I also would have loved to have um, a curriculum like this when I was growing up. I took a lot of classes like this in college, but it was not an offering point before that. But your physics story is a good one, right? Because you have a natural inclination for physics. You like it. It spoke to you. Now imagine a, a program that not just speaks to that one particular, you know, social entrepreneurship or passion project, but aligns with the outcomes that the community wants. They want their kids to stay in the community and go to higher education. They want their kids to get better paying jobs. They want to, to explore career clusters and they want to do it in such a manner that they're jazzed to come to that class. And so the teachers are telling us, thank you for making us look great. The students are, you know, as we're observing and reading the reports, like, thank you for giving us something that's fun and engaging. And then the employers are saying, thank you for giving these kids something useful that are actual, you know, that makes them have employable skills that when they, I hire them, they become better employees. So that's really, it's just a win-win for everybody. Yeah, so I want to dig into that a little bit deeper. What about the curriculum of entrepreneurship creates or, or produces those sort of skill sets that you see are transfer transferable to higher education or you know a workforce type um, position because i almost have this um, feeling of like entrepreneurs don't necessarily need to go to school like a lot of them they get this idea and you know it's it's game changing or they just you know they quit everything else that they're doing and they hit the ground running mm -hmm. on their idea uh, but it seems like you're taking a bit of a different approach. So what is it about your program and the entrepreneurial skill set that you're teaching that is so transferable? Yeah, so we changed their mindset. So a lot of people will see problems and say, oh, that's a problem. Someone else will solve it. Or it's a problem. It's a roadblock. Entrepreneurs see problems as opportunities to make things better. And that and that's what we really do. So we had this wonderful student went through the program, went through the workforce development program, and she really had a very strong passion for social justice. It was really important to her. She didn't know it's a job. She didn't know it's a fellowship opportunity. She went into the program, learned her skills, her passion, matched with this fellowship in Washington, D.C. for the social fellow for social justice fellowship. She learned how to build a resume to avoid the applicant tracking system, learned to build her socials. So when an employer dove into her socials, it said she's a great employee for social justice. And then she learned to interview for that particular job. She then went into, um, you know, she got the job, which is super exciting. She's like, wow, this is cool. I'm, you know, what about college? I didn't even think about college. And then she went into the college counseling program, learned about the financial tools, learned to take care of experiences, write about them in such a manner that now she goes to Howard University and is thriving. It's that mindset. So being a professor at Georgetown University, I learned nine out of 10 of my students don't become entrepreneurs, don't continue that. But do they learn the skills to mm -hmm. think through problems, work as a team, be accountable, set deadlines, set specific goals? These are all entrepreneurial skills mm -hmm. that, man, wherever you work, you're going to need them. Our desire, too, is that if you want to go into hospitality, we don't want you to just be the cashier, which is a great entry point. We want you to become the general manager or we want you to become the franchisee. Like, how can you think aspirationally to get where you need to go to have a better paying job? So that's that's entrepreneurial uh, thinking. And that's what we really embed in the students. Yeah. And that's amazing. I mean, these are skills, like you said, that are required and make your life better in many aspects of life. And I think it speaks to the point of entrepreneurial endeavors not necessarily being, you know, your job or your profession. It, it is a lifestyle, and I'm sure you can speak to that. Um, being, you know, a, a serial founder, you know, multiple founding companies. So, um, I'm curious. In the beginning, when, you know, maybe right after COVID, when you're working on university startups, you decided there's a need for this. Is there one um, instance that really stands out in your mind as really selling yourself to this being the future of what you're going to do and pursue for the next, you know, five, 10, however many years as you see this continuing for. Yeah. So we did a, um, a girl's, um, 
nonprofit. We work with them, provide a programming partner. They're all over. It's, it's an amazing nonprofit. And when we read to her, the executive director, the impact report, and the impact that we're having on these kids, she was crying. She was literally crying in our meeting. And it was just like, wow, like we are really impacting these kids in a manner and in a way that just hasn't been done before. So that to me was like really, even thinking about it now, I'm getting like a little choked up because just her reaction of you can impact someone's life in a way that is unique and special. We're providing our skills, my life training of being a professor and an entrepreneur, my colleagues and these amazing folks, like we've done it in such a manner that we can help people better their lives. It was, it was exciting and we knew we we're onto something really special um, when that happened. Uh, the second event is our clients don't just sign up. They like 10x or 20x their contracts. It is insane. You know, yeah. the, the, we're taking a $10,000 contract and turn it into a $285,000 contract. It's just unbelievable the reaction that we're getting from these school districts, these schools. Um, so those are the two things that kind of stick out. Yeah. I can imagine that, you know, clients. 10x and 20x in their contracts would be something that would uh, reassure you that this is probably you know an impactful uh, startup. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been exciting. That's awesome. um, so, what's the next uh, what's the next steps for university startups for you? Yeah, so we're we're in growth. We're in total growth mode. I mean, I, I have about 15 meetings on my calendar today. Um, we can't hire fast enough. We are just growing. You know, we just signed uh, schools in Texas sign that deal with a nonprofit in Arkansas. Th those are the, the first writers continue to grow. We want to hit 3 million ARR by the end of next year. Um, and we're heading in that direction. That's number one. Number two is we're really building an amazing tech um, to support it, you know, with generative AI and just the scalability of what we're building out. It's just incredible. We um, have this amazing CTO who um, inventing the scraping software to identify ISIS and other terrorist groups on Twitter, you know, President Obama brought him in and recognized his efforts to stop terrorism. It's just an amazing individual. And so the tech we're building helps us um, not just with this helping the kids, but it's building these amazing barriers to entry that when I go head to head with my competitors, we're winning all these contracts. So that's, you know, it focusing on growth, focusing on great technology, but most importantly, helping these kids have a better future. That's a number one. And get to our mission to impact 3 million students. That's our goal. Mm -hmm. That's a great goal to have. And that's a very impressive person to have on your team. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. Um, so you raise a handful of money about a year ago or how long ago was it? So we actually just finished uh, raising our seed. So in total, we've raised about 2.4. Um, okay. So that's going to, you know, propel our growth to the 3 million ARR next year. And then, you know, we're going to continue to grow from there. We'll go to our much larger Series A from there. Mm -hmm. Well, con congratulations on the seed. Thanks. It's very impressive. I know it's been a downtime for entrepreneurs in terms of raising and every single dollar counts. And I imagine that every single dollar that you have is going to be utilized in a very efficient manner and yeah. just every single place that it can help across the board. Um, so that's amazing. I am curious about what you're hearing from the students in the program, not necessarily like, oh, this is, you know, an amazing program, I've learned so much, blah, 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 but what are they interested in? What are they curious about? What are they using, you know, the skills that you're teaching them to, go, to then go and pursue afterwards or even during, if that's, you know, something that they do during the process? Yeah, something's really cool is happening in these in these courses and these, you know, through our technology and through the platform. They're looking to solve problems in their own community. So obviously we measure 42 metrics and then we do a qualitative um, interviews as well. And the quotes are, you know, now I want to stop violence in my community. I want to set up a mentorship program from the high school to the middle school. They are looking at things that they want to solve. And I'll give you an example. We had this one student team that came up with a teddy bear, uh, you know, because they really want to hold on to it because they're not in the best neighborhood. They hear gunfire. It's just not overly safe. But the clever innovation was is they put a QR code on the bottom of the teddy bear so you could flash your mobile device, and it sent you to a psychologist 24-7. 
right? That was their product because they're looking to solve community issues that quite candidly, if I don't live in that community, I don't have their perspective. I, you know, I can empathize and, and sympathize, but they are living it. So if yeah. you give them the tools to be empowered to solve community issues and build a better community, that is life changing. So that, mm-hmm. that to me is the most exciting component of what we're doing, the community wise program. Yeah. It's almost like you're fostering them to build like a militia of entrepreneurs to help their community, keep them safe push them towards new goals and new opportunities. That's really, really cool. Yeah, it's, it's an ecosystem. You know, our, by working with school districts, we can see the middle school and high school students start to build that ecosystem. And as they bring in their businesses and build those pathways to the businesses, the school district feels like, you know, my kid's not going to leave this community. They, they want to stay and they want to make this a better place to live. And that's empowering for the school administrators empowering for the students, but it's empowering for the community at large, right? Here's a whole new, you know, your words, militia, here's a whole new group of folks that want to solve our issues that we as adults just can't seem to solve for whatever reason. And they got such great ideas. So it's really cool working with them. Yeah. So let's uh, change directions a little bit. And I want to talk about your experience with Techstars. So you were uh, JP Morgan, Washington, D.C.'s inaugural program. Your managing director was, was Keith Kamhai. Walk me through that experience. What was the process like before, during, what's it been like after? Yeah, so I, I tease Keith because I, I ran the Georgetown University incubator for about six, seven years. So you and got the leg up on him, you think? No, Keith's program <laughs> was 10x better than mine. And, I, and I'll be honest, for, for really three great reasons. One, operationally, from vision to execution to to really embedding the framework that Techstars taught us and Keith and his team taught us, uh, we still use today. The KPI meetings, um, you know, the vision to execution. These are tools that I've used and will continue to use for the existence of the startup. It's incredible what I learned operationally. Uh, the second part is how to continue to use these mentors that we, um, that Techstars availed to us in ways that um you know may not be efficient you know today tomorrow but i may need them a year from now it's been incredible that structure that mentor structure and using these members i you know just awesome just having these mentors has been great and the third component is my colleagues in tech stars like here's a peer group that you know are going through the same things you know as an entrepreneur you will have one day you think you're going to be a unicorn. The next day you think you're going out of business and you may even have those emotions within the same hour, those conflicting emotions. So just having someone and a group of folks you can commiserate with and just learn from is amazing. I, I am tech stars and I'm not just saying this tech stars, number one advocate. I learned so much of what it really takes to be a positive, you know, optimistic business leader to empower my team. And, and Keith really operationally set the groundwork for that. It was really amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is awesome to hear. And, and the result, and sorry, but the result is there. I mean, I have 20 X since leaving Techstars and I really credit that to what I learned at Techstars. So what would you say if you can put a label on the one or two biggest takeaways from the program. You mentioned a handful of things about what you, you know, carry with you afterwards. But if you have one or two sentences about the biggest takeaways, what would you say they are? Yeah, it's operational excellence, Mm -hmm. Uh, undeniably. Like, you know, operational excellence. And one suggestion I have for people just joining Techstars and being, you know, into the accelerator for the first time is try to have as many team members as you can participate in the great offerings. So when there's financial modeling, I brought in my CFO. When there was marketing, I brought in the marketing team. Like, so they all experience it. Otherwise, it's kind of isolated. And then you come back to your team. Hey, I just learned this. You know, this is we should do this. But if you include that in then the process, it's a lot better experience for everybody. And your team realizes why this is so valuable. But operational excellence, especially coming out of Keith's program, was just insanely good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So you're serial founder. Do you ever go through an accelerator prior to this experience? No, I, I ran one for seven years an incubator, but I've never been through an accelerator. And I, this is what Techstars should do. They should have every five years that if you've been a founder, you can go through it again because it was, it was such a great experience. Yeah. Um, I mean, I loved every minute of it. Like the Series B Techstars? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like how to get you to the next round. You know, yeah. it was just life changing. I mean, and I'm not just saying that life changing for me, life changing for my co-founder changing for our team and for our company it's just propelled us on a trajectory that we are now on um, that we weren't on before quite candidly so what's so different about your current mission and project than in the past and your past endeavors yeah so you know in my prior life as an entrepreneur my number one focus is maximize revenue and profitability i'll be honest you know that that was our goal Techstars, this mission, my company, our company has changed that forever. Our, yes, we want to generate a, you know, we want to be the next unicorn. We want to be amazing profits for my investors. But I, we have a mission to impact 3 million students. And anyone that invests in our company, anyone that we hire, they understand that's mission number one is to impact 3 million students. That is a different perspective than I have. I've also come to believe that if you have that mission, everything else takes care of itself. We'll hit that revenue number. We'll be extremely profitable. We'll have a great organization and we'll attract and retain amazing employees that believe in that mission. So that, that's a different um, where I am in my life. And um, I do, to be honest, I always wish I had that motivation, but we really have it now. So how did you come to that mission? Because I think a lot of people who are listening to this are entrepreneurs like yourself. And you mentioned if you have that mission, everything else will take care of itself. So this could be some really valuable advice for um, founders who aren't sure how to establish their core mission and their core goals. And then those other um, pieces of the process aren't taking care of themselves. So how did you come to that mission? Why do you think it is it made it so that everything else was in a good standing because of it. Yeah, so we're, we're a company that has a difference that matters. And and I say that in all seriousness, what, what we do affects communities, affects lives, expects, you know, impacts the entire generations that will now, that go through this program will now impact in a positive way. That's a difference that matters. And so that's our mission you and your company have to find a mission that aligns with the people that you want to hire that serves your customers your beneficiaries whomever that may be and it's all integrated there's there's a great book called fusion that talks about cultural brand fit where everything fits together from sales operation marketing product and it's your brand and your mission are all tied together and you're serving the customer in a difference that matters so I don't have great advice, you know, for other companies because they have to find their own mission, mm -hmm. retain their own people that believe it. But you have to have one mission. You can't have seven. And you have to believe honestly that this is where you go. And you have to be willing to pass on employees that don't truly buy into that mission and that culture because that brings everything down. Mm -hmm. So that, that's where we are. I have people that were making half a million dollars in their prior job. I've worked in for me now or for us now, trust me, we're not paying them a half million dollar salary, <laughs> you know, but they believe in the mission and they're willing to take less in a belief that we can make something great uh, for our students and for the communities and for them as employees. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's really good to have, you know, a solid team that is behind the mission constantly. A question that's been buzzing around my head since before we even had this interview and it, it stems from what you're doing with university startups, but also just a general curiosity. Do you strongly believe that entrepreneurship is teachable to anyone? Yeah, it's an awesome question. So we take a slightly different approach. I believe the entrepreneurial mindset is teachable to everyone. I, I Let me just say, I, I don't think there are those, you know, who are just born entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. I don't believe that. But I do believe the environment you create and the transformation of the mindset can all be learned, that you can be less risk averse, go through our, our program, have the proper environment, have the proper mentorship, have the proper inspiration, and become more risk averse. I, I mean, more willing to take more risk. Mm -hmm. I believe that you can come into our program not hopeful for your future, go through the program and see the possibilities, and you can think about, I can have a better future. Mm -hmm. So that's what I really focus in on is that thinking, you can be better. You can have a better future. And you really do that through entrepreneurial thinking. So whether or not they start their own company is less important to me than inspiring someone to think, I can be a better person, I can have a better future, I am not stuck in this rat race that I, I can do things different and better than what I thought I could do just six months ago. That to me is exciting. Whether they choose to do their own startup, great, cool, awesome. But if they can be employee number two, or if they can be you know, the operations manager or marketing and willing to you know, have a future focus, that to me is, you know, is game changing, it's exciting. And that's what we focus in on. Yeah. So it's not necessarily that everyone should become an entrepreneur, but everyone can develop these skills and this thinking patterns and everything so that they can use them throughout other aspects of their life. hundred uh percent. -huh. You know, you see someone at that bar, you want to approach them. Hey, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm going to go and speak to that person. Mm -hmm. This is a person that I, I want to interview for a job. How do I network and find that individual? These are entrepreneurial skills. Mm -hmm. that are that will be with you and you can get better at them over and over again you know through repetition through practice through skill building and that to me mm -hmm. is super exciting that's amazing and, and i agree because i feel like i speak with a lot of entrepreneurs doing this role and a lot of them sort of have this childhood narrative where they're like 10 years old and they're selling lemonade or they're selling candy on the bus or um, other similar stories where it's kind of, it seems like it's rooted in them from the very beginning. Um, but I, I've always wondered, like, could I teach or could anyone be taught how to do this if they wanted to do it? And it's clear not all people want to do it. Some people are more risk averse, like you said. But to be able to build the skills to do it, I think is extremely important. So that brings me to my last question. I want to be conscious of your time. What sort of advice do you have for founders out there who are early on in their careers about how they can take the next step, accelerate forward, just any general piece of advice maybe that you receive from someone else that you've kept close to your heart for a long time? I think everyone would be really interested to hear. Yeah, so there's a couple of things that just immediately just jump out. One is when you bring on co-founders or you bring in employees, make sure uh, that they have different skill sets than you. Right. There's no point of hiring two Mark Starens. You know, you know, you think they think exactly the same. That's not the way to do it. If I'm good at sales, bring in someone good in operations. That's number one. They have to believe in your mission, though. And that mission has to be important. But bringing in diverse and inclusive people who just think differently is so important to the success of your program. The second thing is get a mentor. You know, Michael Jordan, all the greatest athletes in the world have coaches individual coaches, not just team coaches. So for some reason, entrepreneurs and business folks think, oh, I don't need a coach. You need a coach. You need someone to constantly coach you and work with you to become better if you want to become the best business executive and founder that you can. Um, that Those are the two main things that speak to me that just really, really, really um, just speak out and yell, hey, you have to do. And the, a third element, if I can add, is empower your people, right? Steve Jobs has a great quote that, you know, I don't hire people to, um, you know, for me to tell them what to do. I hire them to tell me what to do. That That is our philosophy. Like we empower people. I have great stories of, you know, employees doing things better than I would have because I got out of the way, empower them to do it. And then they tell me what happened. It's just, it's great and it's a great way to build an organization and they'll buy into what you're doing if you do it that way as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, those are three great pieces of advice. Thank you so much, Mark. I sure. think our listeners will really enjoy this episode and the pieces of insight and advice that you had to share with them. Awesome.
Great. Thanks for having me, Dylan. Absolutely. Have a great day. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more stories from the Techstars Network, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our other social media. If you're a founder looking at 10X your startup, do not hesitate to visit our website to apply to a program today. And most importantly, always remember, give first.